Hi and welcome to the next module in the KX introductory workshop series. In this module we'll be looking at different data structures available within KB. Um, we have looked at tables mainly up to this point and um, so we'll, we'll be taking um, a look at lists, also dictionaries, um, we'll be looking at doing things like casting from one type to another briefly um, and then different ways and useful and some top tips when handling lists and, and some handy operators um, and then we will take a look at tables at the end um, as well. Um, so just to say at the start this is a very quick high level um, intro um, but in here on code.kx.com we've got much more thorough documentation and um, there's also the code for or the Q for Mortals book by Jeffrey Barr which is an awesome resource and um, we have full chapters dedicated to lists, dictionaries, tables etc so in there you can get a much more compre comprehensive um, background and a lot of context around um, these di different data structures and how they differ and how um, we operate on them. So I will be just doing a little quick um, kind of intro to each um, and then I'll leave it up to you to go and do further reading and investigation on your own. Um, so let's start off with lists. So um, whether you've known it or not, um, you've already been handling lists throughout um, this workshop so far um, and um, how you've been doing that is using tables. So tables and their underlying columns um, are actually just lists under the hood. So if we look at our trips table, so going back to our taxi data that we're um, very familiar with at this stage, if we're selecting just the fare column from trips and we have a few filters here on date and the vendor. And then if we run type on this, well first let's just look at what that looks like. So this is giving me back a table of one column. So if I did meta on this, I'm seeing it's just one column of type float and um, yeah, I'm getting a column back. Now, if I wanted to um, extract this as a list, I could simply just index into the table and you could do this with the square brackets or without, um, it doesn't make a difference. It might just be easier to read with the square brackets. Um, but basically here I'm returning just the fares. So, oh, I'm just... Um, yeah, so here we've got our list of fares and um, you'd seen there I had type in here as well. So I was just showing the difference between those data types. So the first one here is 98H and the second one here will be 9H. So if I look at my data types, so I'm going to go back to my reference card and I look at 98H, I can see that's a type of table. And then if I look at 9, I can see that's type float. Um, and the fact that it's a positive value is indicating that it's a list. So yeah, we can run type on that to check what we have. Um, and we're just saying here, if the number is positive and under 20, we can see we have a simple list. So all of these here um, under 20, these are all, if we have this and it's a positive number, we know we've got a list and they're all the same type. Um, we can also have mixed lists, also known as general lists in KDB. Um, and we can create these using um, this round bracket with a semicolon separating them notation. So the first um, value here is VTS, which is uh, indicated with a backtick, meaning it's a symbol. And the second one here is a float. So if I look at my list general, I've got two elements. And if I run type on that list, I can see that they are, it is zero H. Um, I'm also just showing here, more generally, we have another way of defining an empty list. Um, and that is just having an open and closed um, round bracket and I'm showing that that's also 0H. So 0H indicates you've got a mixed or a general list um, and your types are either undefined or they're mixed. So you've got a mixture and um, it's obviously not attributing any type to that which is why you have zero. Um, we can also join these different um, entities together and all these different data types together using the comma operator. Um, so this comma operator is the most basic form of join and we can use this to join variables, lists, Later on, we'll see like dictionaries and also with tables. Um, this differs to the joins we looked at in the previous module um, because in those joins, like the left join, as of join, et cetera, we were trying to join in additional columns. So in joining things on the right-hand side, um, um, but with the comma, you could, you'd be appending new records. So that would be joining things below on your table. So if you wanted to append new records and not change your overall meta, um, you could use this comma operator with tables. Um, but you can see here, we can also use it with other different other data types and entities. Um, so if I look at this, I've now made a mixed list 
or a general list and I have got a mixture of different types in here. Um, you can see this is the first time we're showing different textual data, I think. So we've got a symbol and a string. So again, these are um, documented better here, but just to note, um, a symbol is one element and a string is many, many elements or our list basically. So um, W is one item in the list, O is another item, or is another item and so on. Whereas this hello, uh, because we've made it a symbol, it's one item. Um, so um, we're showing here that if we had selected from trips and we'd use the wrong vendor by accident, um, and then we indexed into that list, what we'd actually be getting is um, an empty list because we um, had no results returned from SVT fares. And we can have that as well. Um, this is what, how it would look. So we've got this empty list notation again. So our backtick float here is indicating that this empty list is of type float. And then we've got this dollar sign, um, which is meaning um, that's, that's indicating that this is the type and we're, um, we look at that a little bit more now in the next section. Um, on casting. So if I wanted to um, cast from one type to another, so we can see by default, um, if I just have this uh, a numeric value without a decimal point, it's automatically assuming it's seven, which is a long. So if I wanted to make that a, t a type of float, I could use this notation. So we can look the, the list just looks the same, but we have this additional F at the end. So if I get rid of this, uh, we can see before, and there's just one and two. And then this F at the end is indicating that I've cast it to type float. So it's just using back tip, um, lowercase, the word float, and then this dollar sign. Um, I could also have done this using um, a similar notation with the dollar sign, but instead of passing in the word float, I'm passing in F and F is coming from this C column. So instead of using name, I'm using C. So we're actually looking at this example. And that is lowercase in inverted commas. Um, and I see we're just seeing here before and after we're getting the same type. So we get a new list of 9H. Um, we can we get the exact same thing using this. And then the third way of doing this is using um, 9H itself. So that's a short value. So anytime you run type, you'll end up getting this H at the end of it returned. Um, that's actually got nothing to do with this, um, you know, data structure you're, you're, um, you're investigating or, or checking the type of. What that's actually saying is this 9 value or this 9 you know, this, the seven value as it was before is a short value. Um, so you can largely ignore it. It has no relevance to the object you're investigating. Um, but just to explain what that is for those of you curious. Um, so yeah, we're showing here, we can create an empty list as well. And um, that would just be done if we didn't want to make a uh, attribute a type to it, we could just use open and close round bracket. And then if we wanted to attribute a type, we would just pass the name of the data type with the cast operator. Um, and looking at the list of fares again, um, we have a, a neat way of returning just the number of fares we want to look at. So um, one way to do this would be using sub lists. So say for example, fares, it's very long, it's truncated off here with this dot, dot, dot. Um, I'm gonna use sub lists. So I'm actually just want the, the first 10 um, elements of that list returned. And I can use sub lists to do that. Um, I can run that on, on lists and I can run that on tables as well. Um, I could also have used this take operator. Um, so I can use 10 take, fares does the exact same thing. We'll show um, a little bit further on how that how they differ. But for this example, we're getting the same results returned. Um, and sublist is clever. So if you wanted to get the last 10 elements instead of the first 10 elements, you would simply um, put a minus in front of it. Um, so there's a wee exercise here on, on sublist and, and using that with lists. So you can pause the video and have a go at that. Um, one thing to note um, on the difference between this take and sublist, um, sublist will only return the number of elements that are in the input list. So basically it's gonna cap it at the your row count or your, your list count. So for example, if I count my, um, my list of fares before I do anything, so count, of fares and return that. And then I do, I'm gonna say 1 million take fares and then 1 million sublist fares. You see with fares here, I end up getting a million um, results back. And what that's gonna do is just keep duplicating and reduplicating um, all your results numerous times. Whereas if you use sublist, it's gonna cap it at just the number of um, 
elements in that list. So sub list is, you know, nine times out of 10 going to be more useful than the tick. Um, and then the last little thing we'll touch on here um, is sorting our data or our list. So we have this keyword ascend and that sorts our list in ascending order. So if we have a look at this and let's just run show in front, um, we can see this has now ascended everything. So the lowest value being um, 2.5. If we just wanted um, the distinct values of this, we could also do distinct fares here. And that would get a, a list of unique values from fares. So um, we, we can probably see here a bit better how that's sorted thing. So um, we've got 2.5, 2.9, 3.3 and so on. So ascend is a very handy little keyword that we use. I'll just put it back to what it was. Um, and then for example, here we're showing if you had run 10 sublist sorted fares um, and you only looked at the first elements of the list, um, you might conclude that the uh, journeys in New York City are great value. Um, so yeah, distinct here is handy as well to make sure, you know, you're looking across the whole board. Um, um, yeah, so we had exercise 13 um, and then as well 14 here um, just to go over that material. Um, so have a go with those and I'll see you in the next video.